Welcome, ladies and gentlemen of the press. Today is Tuesday, the 15th day of October, and we are glad to be back here on this podium at the Charles, the historic Charles Brown Conference Room here at the Ministry of Information, Culture, Affairs, and Tourism. Minister General Limit Pia is traveling with the President. And we are privileged to act in his stead as Minister of Information to continue to update the Liberian people uh, with the progress the government is making across every sector. Today we have a distinguished gentleman, Dr. Ibrahim Yan. He's a Liberian academic and Deputy Minister of Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs for International Cooperation and Economic Integration. Dr. Yan will speak to us and provide us updates on the just ended 79th section of the United Nations General Assembly. And we'll also throw light on Liberia's bid for a non-permanent seat at the United Nations Security Council. We want to welcome Liberians following this interaction via the social media on LN TV and EFDC across the country. Why is it important for Dr. Nien to come here to speak? There are a couple of our media friends who are giving the country hard time. They wake up in the morning. All you are interested in is bad news for the country. That bureau has just launched a bid. That bureau has just launched a bid. Just please go last. For this non permanent seat that has become a topic of issue. We want to put, when I say we, the government wants to put La Bureau back on a high table and on the community of nations. And when these efforts have been made, there are people in the media who have been on. I want to refer to them as the disciple of bad news. Everything they want to publish about this country, all of the dynamic leadership of President Boyata, is bad news. So that again is here. Yeah. Some of you might have heard in the media, oh, that bureau had lost the bid, that bureau defeated the election. I'm not close with the authority to speak to that. Dr. Yen will provide updates. We are also joined by Mr. Robert Ernest G. Debbie Wilson. He's the Deputy Director for Operations at the General Services Agency. There are issues that are involved lately. The purchase of a vehicle exceeding the stipulated cost by the government of Liberia. Mr. Rao Wilson is here to give you uh, an update on the status of that vehicle as far as the president's mandate is concerned. We'll take that again first. He will be followed by Mr. Wilson from the General Services Agency. But before that, let me now stand on existing protocols to make the following remarks on behalf of the government of Liberia. As you may all be aware, the President, His Excellency Joseph Iman Boyka, is in Rome, Italy, where he's attending the fourth edition of the World Food Forum. A forum which is being organized by the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization is being held on the team Good Food for All for today, 
and tomorrow. In his speech yesterday, President Baka called for bold actions, which he said are required if the world must transform food systems to feed everyone. The president called for global support to local food systems. He called for the promotion of climate resilience and advancement of climate smart agricultural practices. He also called for strengthening of social safety lights program that will provide direct support to people around the world who are at risk of food insecurity. The president at the event, the president was also received in audience yesterday by the FAO Director General, Ku Dongyi, who reaffirmed the organization's commitment to Liberia's arrest agenda and the National Agricultural Development Plan, the NAP. Also, over the weekend, President Baka broke grounds for the construction of Liberia's first ever utility scale solar farm. The 20 megawatt solar farm is being constructed at the Mankove Hydro Power Plant facility. The project is a major boost to our nation's effort to expand access to electric power and enable our nations to combat seasonal power shortages. When completed in August of next year, the plan will increase Mankofi's capacity to about 108 megawatts and will go a long way in showing that our people and businesses have stable, stable and predictable access to electric power. When the president broke ground for this project last Friday, he indicated that his administration attaches the highest level of priority to the supply of adequate, reliable, and affordable energy. And without such energy, his arrest agenda will face major challenges affecting everything from agricultural productivity to the functioning of schools and hospitals. The project, it is important to note, is part of the World Bank's regional emergency solar power intervention project. We are told that the cost of the project is estimated at 96 million in financing. It is intended for Liberia to develop a solar plant and expand the Mankovi hydro plant capacity. The solar plant project is expected to be completed and switched on by August of next year. We look forward to that tremendous breakthrough uh, to the electricity sector. We are going to see an unprecedented trend in the functionaries of the revenue sector. The Liberia Revenue Authority announced that it has, as of September 30th, 2024, generated more than 500 million US dollars in domestic revenue. Domestic revenue is the money collected by the LRA as taxes and other levies and fees from taxpayers engaged in various economic activities in the country. The LRA conveys its profound gratitude to compliant taxpayers for their unwavering commitment to fulfilling their tax obligation to the country. This commitment of LRA says is playing, is playing an important role in advancing Liberia's revenue generation efforts. Only Liberians can develop Liberia and the taxes you pay to the government is what the government uses to promote development across the country. As of September 30th, coming to the poll, the LRA has collected 513.8 million. The amount represents 74% out, out of the total domestic revenue envelope of 694 million. The 513.8 the annual collector of the September 30 represents 12% increase in domestic revenue compared to the same period 
Black skin. Black skin. Lastly, before we take that again, the Supreme Court opened yesterday for its October term of court. And the Honorable Liberian Legislature has also returned today for its final sitting for the year. The form of our former government comprises three separate and coordinated branches, and the three branches are in official business as of today. We note a series of comments from the Honorable Chief Justice urging the executive to prioritize access to justice by increasing budgetary allocations to the judiciary. We have heard the Chief Justice's message and the government's appropriate authority will act in the upcoming fiscal year as the President has committed to doing so. The rule of law and access to justice are an important pillar of the arrest agenda. And as government, we remain committed to the judiciary in all branches of government equality. We also want to welcome back the Honorable Legislature to their final sitting for the year and thank the Honorable Speaker of the House of Representatives, Jay Fernandez Fofa. His positive comments in helping us allay the propaganda against the President's travel abroad. The Speaker, the speaker noted recently that a developing nation like Liberia needs a leader needs a leader as a chief spokesperson to get out there to find support that the country solely needs. This is exactly what President Weicker is doing. And we thank Speaker Kofa for crossing the party lines and giving the support of the President's initiative on the international scene. We, as a government, adapted a whole of government approach. And we have always said that Unlike previous administration, we're not going to use the Ministry of Information to antagonize either of the branches of the government. We do believe that the coordination as envisaged by the founders of our constitution, our republic, is important for the smooth functioning of our dear nation. So we want to welcome back the legislature and also welcome back the Chief Justice and members of the judiciary as they resume official business on behalf of the country today. That being said, we now welcome Dr. Nian to the podium. He will speak. And then Mr. Rao Wilson will speak. We'll take your questions, we'll make it interactive, and they will respond to your question as always. Thank you. session of the UN General Assembly where we accomplished a lot of diplomatic gains. We made a lot of diplomatic push and the success stories are enormous. Thanks to His Excellency President Joseph Numa Kwakai for providing the direction and giving us the mandate to articulate and execute Liberia's foreign policy, which Minister Beslo Nyanti is definitely implementing. At the UN General Assembly, we participated in a general debate as a country, and the President delivered his speech at the General Assembly focusing on the need for war, peace, security, and justice. And he particularly emphasized the need for peace in the Sahel region of West Africa, all countries in Africa generally that, has been, that have been destabilized by armed conflict and call on the United Nations and all member states to support peace efforts in those countries. You are quite aware 
that uh, the Sahel region of West Africa, my, uh, Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, are dogged by challenges of insecurity, terrorism, and armed conflict. And this is even more, is even more undermined by the natural consequences of climate change and other environmental disasters that are leading to mass migration of people, civilians from these territories to the southern part of West Africa. And so the president called on the international community to organize an intervention in that region and to organize an intervention in Sudan. Sudan has been in a civil war since 20, April 2023. And DR Congo for many years has been in a very deep and protracted civil conflict. And so the president used the opportunity to demonstrate his leadership and his experience of governance in Africa. And so he called for peace, stability, and justice, particularly for war victims. And he announced Liberia's intention to initiate the process of justice for the victims of the Liberian Civil War by the establishment of the Office of the War and Economic Crimes Code that is supposed to lead to the establishment of the War and Economic Crimes Code. And our president also emphasized the need to keep ECOWAS together. You are quite aware of the current challenge faced by ECOWAS with the announced departure of Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger, three countries that are under military rule. And diplomatic efforts are underway to have these countries come back to the regional body so that ECOWAS will work together to ensure democratic governance in those countries and help them with their security challenges. Unfortunately, they announced that they were leaving the regional body uh, by, the, by the end of this year. So our president used the UN General Assembly to call for war leaders in the United Nations to help keep this regional body together. And he also used the opportunity to talk about the great strides we have made in this country in democratic consolidation. Four successive peaceful democratic elections that have shown to the world that our country is a consolidated democracy. Two of those elections saw the transfer of power from a ruling political party to another, to an opposition political party seamlessly. So that is a remarkable achievement of a post-conflict country. And so the president informed the world of our position today as a progressive, peaceful, and democratic nation. Our president and the foreign minister also participated in a number of bilateral meetings that are aimed at bolstering our campaign for the UN Security Council and aimed at uh, establishing diplomatic relations with other countries, um, particularly countries of the Global South. We established new diplomatic relations with Bahrain, a country in the Middle East, with Croatia in Europe, and Uzbekistan in Central Asia. These are all developing countries that under our policy of deepening South-South cooperation, we intend to extend relationship and diplomatic relations with and collaborate or cooperate with them on development and other technical aspects of international cooperation. At the UNGA, we also participated in several multilateral meetings particularly the Summit of the Future, which led to the adoption of the path towards a peaceful future. The Summit of the Future was to assess the status of the implementation of the UN SDG, the Sustainable Development Goals, and for the war leaders of countries of member countries of the United Nations to determine a progressive path as we move closer to the end of the UN SDG. Uh, the, the, the threshold year is 2030. We also participated in several other meetings, including the meeting of the Group of 77, which is mainly a meeting of developing countries that come together to share policy ideas, to influence debate at the UN General Assembly, and also to influence other international dialogue on development and peace in the world. And then we participated in a peace building commission meeting and several meetings on environment, sustainable development, which our EPA executive director uh, participated in and submitted several treaties that Liberia signed. 
the meeting of the Peace Building Commission was very useful to Liberia. We are a member of um, a client country of the Peace Building Commission, which means we, so we receive support for peace building initiatives, particularly in the area of transitional justice, reconciliation, and now as we move towards the establishment of the World Economic Grand School, we think we need the Peace Building Commission support more to guide this process. In August, the Liberal configuration of the Peace Building Commission met where we presented our agenda for the for our new program for women and youth in peace and security. We use this meeting as well, the Peace Building Commission meeting, to articulate this position more that we want to focus more on youth and women peace and security, particularly as we are currently facing this drug epidemic that is facing our young people and numerous cases of sexual and gender-based violence against women. So the focus of President Wakai is now to ensure that young people have the opportunities to develop uh, in a free, progressive environment where they can achieve their full potentials and women have the opportunity, equal opportunity as men. And so we are seeking the support of the Peace Building Commission to implement this agenda of women and youth peace and security and our program in uh, the establishment of the war and economic crimes code. Now, <clears throat> I would like to inform you, on behalf of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, that our campaign for a seat on the U.S. Security Council is well on course, and our path to victory is inexorable. We are winning the seat, and uh, our Minister of Foreign Affairs is working towards that. The election hasn't been held. The election will be held in June 2025. Liberia did not participate in any election for the Security Council this year. The election for the Security Council this year was held in June 2024. Five new countries were elected. One for Africa, and that's Somalia, for the seat that, has, that Mozambique, Mozambique will be leaving the seat by the end of this year. And so Somalia will replace Mozambique. We have secured commitments from many countries and our candidacy has been endorsed by our competent regional bodies, the African Union, ECOWAS, they both endorsed our candidacy this year. Yet, we are not resting on those laurels. We are vigorously campaigning because we have to win a two-thirds majority to be elected to the UN Security Council. 193 member countries will be voting, and we must secure the votes of 128 or 129. And so we are not resting because we are, we are receiving endorsement from ECOWAS and the African Union or because we have received commitments from several countries across the world. We are campaigning. On September 27, we officially launched our campaign at the headquarters of the UN, where we take advantage of the opportunity provided by the General Assembly which normally will bring together all member states of the United Nations. So we took advantage of this global gathering to present our candidacy to all member states of the UN. Several heads of states and permanent representatives of their governments attended the launch of our campaign. His Excellency President Joseph Numa Bwakai used the opportunity to call on governments around the world to support our candidacy and inform them that we intend to use our experience in post-conflict peace building to influence decisions of the UN Security Council. So, moving forward, why we want to win this seat? We hope to use the Security Council to ensure that Liberia participates and influences the most consequential global conversations on war, peace, security, climate change, justice, and sustainable development. This is the most powerful platform and most powerful body of the United Nations. If you win a seat and become a member of uh, a member of the Security Council that has only 15 members at a time, five permanent, ten rotating, if you win a seat on this body, it's a demonstration of significant and competent leadership of the country. And so we are committed to winning this seat. And again, let me emphasize that our path to victory is inexorable and somewhat inexorable. So this is why we are campaigning on this mantra 
that says the world is just and peaceful world. A seat on the UN Security Council will enhance our visibility on the international stage and position us as a strategic country that other countries may want to engage with or to do business with. It will also send a clear message that we are no longer a pariah and conflict affected country. That was 20 years ago when international media classified our country as a pariah nation. Justifiably so, we were a few, according to the description, collapsed and dysfunctional state. But at this stage, after 20 years of progressive peace building and democratic consolidation, we want to send a new message. And that message is that Liberia is a peaceful, progressive, and democratic state with the experience and capability to contribute to world peace and prosperity. This is the new character that we are presenting to the world. And President Joseph Wakai is committed to sustaining this. He has mandated the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Madam Sarah Beslo Nyanti, to ensure that we achieve this. And our team is committed. The Minister is currently in DRC negotiating with the Democratic Republic of Congo because they are also contesting. We will be competing for two seats. Two seats will be available for Africa in 2025. Liberia and DRC are going for that seat. So we are, we, are, we are engaging with them so that we share experiences, we campaign together, and then we facilitate each other's access to this seat. So she is currently in DRC, and then she's doing a lot of shopping diplomacy. She is not resting on this. So we intend to use this opportunity to rebrand the country's image in a positive light. And until we reposition ourselves as a respectable member of the international community and as a credible partner to other countries, we are not resting. We are winning this seat in June 2025 for the period uh, January 2026 to December 2027 for a two-year term. We therefore call on all Liberians from all political shades, ideological direction to join the support. It is a national campaign. It, it is not a partisan campaign. Madam Beslo is not campaigning for herself. She's campaigning for Liberia. President Wakai didn't call on world leaders to support Liberia's seat to a UN Security Council. He didn't say send me to the UN Security Council. He called on world leaders to support Liberia to the UN Security Council. And so we call on all Liberians. This is why we invited Liberians from different political parties to attend the launch of the campaign and will receive very great messages of endorsement to this campaign. So again, the call is out there, members of the civil society, political parties, whenever you meet other or citizens from other countries, talk about this campaign. Members of the cabinet traveling to meetings, we gave them campaign materials that talk about Liberia's intention to win this seat and our objective, what we intend to accomplish when we sit on this seat, how we intend to contribute to world peace and security. So this is a national call to action. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dada Yen. Could it have put it better? And succinctly, so you heard from the horse's mouth, Liberia's campaign for the non permanent seat at the UN Security Council is on an irreversible course. That being said, let me now invite Mr. Raoul Rosing, the Deputy Director for Operations of the General Services Agency. I'm sure he's going to be very brief. And then thereafter, we'll make it into action. You need to have your hand Good afternoon to the press and all those watching by the internet, the video, and all around the world. <clears throat> when the former Minister of Commerce, Honorable Amin Modal, resigned 
his position as Minister of Commerce. The President, Your Excellency, Ambassador Joseph Yuma Boyka Sr. acknowledged his letter and mandated the General Service Agency to take custody of the vehicle. I will now be verbatim of what the President stated. The President has further directed that the vehicle in question be transferred to the General Services Agency for appropriate, I want to that word, appropriate use in accommodating VIP guests of the government. I'm saying this to emphasize on appropriate because people tend to abuse some of these opportunities. I want you to rest assured that these VIP guests that will come, they will use their vehicle. Let me say the caveat that they get a good quotation and say that every time they can have it, can request for that vehicle. A guest plate will be placed on the vehicle, and by Monday, all of the protocols which are passed through in terms of giving it out to military agents that will get international guests to meet those requirements. The General Service Agency is committed to that process and will execute our mandate to the fullest. Thank you. <laughs> so you heard from the <coughs> you heard from the General Services Agency the the ego that was purchased above the stipulated price of the government of Liberia by the former Minister of Commerce has been taken into custody by the General Services Agency. By the way, you all know the GSA manages government assets. So it was a very sustained message. Clear in itself that GSA got a vehicle and they will make sure that that vehicle is not abused. So the vehicle will be used appropriately as instructed by the President. I the GSA is working to commend the folks at the GSA to ensure that government can get value for money uh, in terms of the management of its logistics. So we'll take a few questions. Doc, you have a Yeah. Mr. Wilson, you have a pen? We'll entertain questions. You already know the routine. Thank you. So please put your details and the institution report Thank you. My name is Augustine Sai and I report for EDLBC. What I'm concerned uh, as it relates to the former Congress Minister of Vehicle, and that is in fact instructed that they be used for the happy purpose or purposes. Honorable Minister, it's often said that sometimes most of the things you listen to. Question going to Mr. Wilson or Mr. Mr. Wilson, not all Wilson. Most often you listen to people they say, oh, they think they put something like them or talk. And that vehicle is not a vehicle that you just easily see with instant corners. So would there be an occasion wherein that identical vehicle where you have and done with uh, all of the the processing. Would there be a time where you call the media in this place and say this is the vehicle that was seized from the former commerce minister and it has been registered and VIP plates now placed on it so that the Liberian people will know that it is indeed not just a mock up. Thank you so much. My name is Morris Oleti and I will report for Okina Pen. Thank you so much, Dr. Nguyen, for your deliberation. Uh, and I am hoping that uh, those who you share some of the campaign messages with, they will also carry them out in making sure that uh, Lambert secure that seat. But uh, Dr. Nguyen, something is very, very much concerning. Uh, we've been seeing on social media uh, that uh, Ambassador Sarah 
has resigned. Um, Hassan Basel, and people are saying that uh, she was pressured because uh, one way or the other, she did not you know, uh, uh, adhere to the president mandate when the president visit, uh, went to the UNGA and all of that. Uh, can you respond to that? And also, there are concerns that uh, the government, particularly the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, is thinking about replacing all the uh, ambassadors in all countries. Um, can you speak to those? Thank you. Thank you so much, Nika, uh, for the press conference. My name is Strobon from my report for Spoon Network. So, Mr. Wilson, uh, there are reports that the vehicle in question is customized. That's one. And number two, uh, some people are concerned if Mr. Hamilton does fingerprint is on the vehicle. I don't know how you will return it to the factory and do all of that, but though you said there are processes uh, to that, you can just explain that for us. And currently, where is the vehicle? Uh, to Dr. Yen, before this big uh, Liberia, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs wrote several individuals in the country. And the former president, George Malawi, was one of those people who should have gone to do three minutes vehicles to endorse like Europe. But he did not do it. He didn't see any, any video from the former minister. He did not even join you at the UN General Assembly. With or without we. Liberia will still win the bid that you said. What was the purpose of you writing, Mr. We are if without we are you win the bid to Minister Daniel Sun? He said there are bad news media. Please, for the sake of the public, for our publication and the audience and the Liberian people, just one a single name of the media, bad news media. We want to know bad news. Good afternoon. I'm Ernest Tamma, a report for EFBC. To Dr. Nguyen, thank you to you guys for the work you guys continue to do for Liberians and Liberia. But uh, my concern has to do with what was reported a few days ago that the government is making effort through your ministry to invite with those Liberians in Beirut, Lebanon, who are presently at war with uh, Israel. That effort, please tell us how far has it gone? Where are we? Thank you. <coughs> Good afternoon. My name is Christopher Bessman. I report for Boss of my Dr. Yaren. Um, I want to know, talking about strategic goals for this PMNT, um, what are the primary strategic goals for Liberia like, to achieve with the letter for the UN Center Security Council? Thank you.
Thank you. Um, so I will take the questions in the order they were presented. The first one is about the permanent representative to the United Nations, Ambassador Fanyan. Um, in August, Ambassador Fanyan, as part of the normal functions of any Minister of Foreign Affairs, was asked to take a new responsibility which we think, uh, for which we, we thought we needed a more competent and hands-on person who could lead that effort. And that was to be a global coordinator for Liberia's campaign to the UN Security Council. And so that is, that's what every country does. When you are having a major international campaign, you look for some of your experienced diplomats to head this campaign. And so Ambassador Fanier was asked to lead this campaign as the global coordinator uh, based in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, global coordinator for Liberia's campaign to the UN Security Council. Uh, we normally see people coming to Liberia, meeting us at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, retired active diplomats who are leading their country's campaign. And so that is the only update we have on Ambassador Fania. Um, she, was only, she was invited since August, giving a greater assignment to lead this campaign. Uh, the second question is on um, the winning of the Security Council is a diplomatic engagement, Security Council seat. It's not a public, a kind of emotive public campaign where you invite people, mass rally, de uh, deliver speeches, and appeal to the emotions of people. It's a diplomatic initiative. And so what we engage with our Minister of Foreign Affairs, heads of state. And so we are doing that. The President Walker's approach of inviting other political leaders to particip participate in this campaign it's just part of his normal approach of inclusive governance. You will notice that this government is very inclusive. Over 20 political parties are in this government. And so every major policy decision President Wakai wants other political parties to participate. And so it was in this spirit that he invited other political leaders. Some of them turned out, while others in a normal exercise of their constitutional rights decided not to participate. But that doesn't affect the nature of the diplomatic engagements that we are participating in. As I told you, the Minister of Foreign Affairs is engaging across the world. She is meeting Ministers of Foreign Affairs. She is meeting heads of, heads of states, and President Walker is doing the same. So that is it for that question. Uh, efforts with Liberians in Lebanon, yes, uh, since April actually, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has been engaged with Liberians residing uh, in Lebanon since April this year. You know that uh, the cross-border conflict between Israel and uh, the Lebanese uh, armed group started since October. And so the Ministry of Foreign Affairs proactively, before it even became a serious conflict like this, before this escalation, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs engaged Liberians in Lebanon and offered them the opportunities of voluntary repatriation. And that effort has been on pause. Very recently in October, just two, a few days ago, we had a meeting with some authorities and who are willing to help Liberia to facilitate the repatriation of Liberians who are stranded in Lebanon. So that is quite on pause. Some of them are happening through uh, intense diplomatic engagement, working with other actors like international organizations and NGOs that are on the ground, making them to know the number of Liberians that are there, that they need support. And so that effort is on pause. Our goal for the UN Security Council, uh, as I stated previously, is to contribute to the significant dialogue on international peace and security, obviously to enhance the country's visibility and to demonstrate to the world that we are no longer a parallel state, but we are a peaceful, progressive, and competent country that is prepared to contribute to international peace and security. This is actually one of the activities, one of our objective of rebranding and repositioning. The foreign minister announced that under, the, under his excellency President Joseph Walker's administration, Liberia is going to be rebranded in the international space and Liberia is going to be repositioned. That repositioning is to, re, is to project Liberia's political leadership in the international space. We have positions in the African Union that are not occupied. We have positions in ECOWAS that are not occupied. There are so many positions in the United Nations that Liberians are qualified for. So this repositioning is also targeting uh, Liberians that are qualified and competent enough
to occupy seats in those international organizations. So it, it is not limited to the UNSC. We have a broad strategy to project Liberian leadership and Liberian competency abroad. And this is just one of it. We need a seat on the Security Council, moving forward, ensuring that Liberia is elected on various UN committees of the Economic and Social Council, and also committees at the African Union and the, uh, the African Union and FOAS level, and also pursuing some of the political leadership positions. So moving forward, we'll be announcing this as well, encouraging qualified Liberians that want positions in international organizations, particularly statutory positions, statutory positions that Liberia could campaign for. We are not talking about bureaucratic level positions that have to be competent based, where you have to submit an application, go through interviews. No, we are talking about statutory positions that Liberia as a country will apply for, for a Liberian national to occupy. So moving forward, this is part of our rebranding, repositioning. And in the next few years, there are targets for seats on the security, I mean the UN Economic and Social Council, the Human Rights Council, and various international councils on environment and sustainable development. We are going to make the page, we'll make the effort. Other countries will be competing. And so our commitment is to ensure that Liberia's, Liberian agency political leadership is broadcast, projected, and exercised globally. And this is the agenda President Bokai, or the mandate President Bokai has given the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and she is definitely executing this and committed to it. Thank you. So thank you. The general union was seeds. No, no union was seeds. It was turned over by Mrs. Colasica, namely with the acting minister of commerce, told GSA no car was seized. To display the car, yes, the car is in the confines of the General Service Agency, our GSA uh, office, UN Drive. You can come there. The car will be displayed for you. Customized? No. Customized vehicle, a personal vehicle. This vehicle is not a personal vehicle of Amin Goda to have used his tongue to start the car. No, it's not customized. So, based on our own knowledge, when it comes to a customized car, your personal car, then you have to do fingerprint where only you have access to it. So, only all factor constant or customized, then you are going to be in GSA company. Again, I say you can visit our offices to see the vehicle. Just contact us. We'll make the relevant preparation. You will come there to look for the fingerprint. To <laughs> yeah. So as I said, the, the I think, or two questions, right? Yeah. So yeah, very good. Thank you. Thanks to our two, our two guests, Dr. Nguyen and Mr. Wilson from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the General Services Agency, respectively. <clears throat> Thanks to you, members of the press, for always complimenting our work. The Ministry was asked one question, and Chokong uh, asked me to point out those that are referred to as disciples of bad news in the media. I mean, after Robert answered the question that the vehicle is not customized, but this time you should know what the cycle of bad news. We all on the radio say, I mean, but that bought a vehicle that is customized. In fact, the vehicle is the, compared to what Donald Trump is riding in America. I mean, we can all say the passion that we all have to see this country improve. But you don't have to lie. You don't have to sensationalize the publication. So if these people are customized, only I'm if you are the opening, how can you go to the company? Can run the country the 
this. I can understand this is how it has been for a very long time. But we have to embrace the wind of change. I've always said that our friends who abandon all the trappings of life and get into the practice of journalism, the media field, you have an obligation to society. And that is a tell the truth, and now they have truth. If Daniel Samuel is five feet, six inches tall, say it that way. Say it that way. Yeah, we are now talking about projecting Liberia's image on the international scene, building a profile. And the only interest somebody got in the news was a, the president's attractive president. <laughs> For six years, one of our strategic partners in the international space shot their doors on Liberia. The president went to China. And by that was our help in the margin for the focus. We have a 20 million interchange that is about to be built in your country. As we speak, demolition is ongoing. Demolition is ongoing. The president went to the United States on the margin of the UN General Assembly, held meetings. GFA got 30 incubators. The country, you think the money that we use to develop the country, you think we can find it we don't want to be the other government, I'm only working to pay C17. The tax we have as a country is so enormous that we have to pull every screen out there to make sure that it happens. Because we owe it as an obligation to our people. The president is not focusing on the next election. But those who are focusing on the next election, they are stuck in that space. We will not allow them to distract this government. So our bid for the non-permanent seat of the U.S. Security Council is on course. Whether the former president who was dancing in my neck, my waist, did a short video, it doesn't matter. We have a seasoned diplomat who is leading that effort. And we do believe that we will succeed. This country is not going to go back. We are on the path way to progress, national progress. That includes rebranding our country's image, telling our story out there that a country once ravaged by war, decades of war, can emerge from the ashes of destruction and become a post conflict success story. A country whose experience we can use to make peace out there. That's the message of our president is preaching. And we respect our friends, every citizen, whether you are a journalist, you are a private individual, we expect you to support this endeavor. It is beyond that deal. That's why we didn't politicize it. We invited everybody. The symbol who the really cry, oh, the former president is going to oppose you for it. But I like what Dara Yen said, the government is more inclusive. You got more than 20 political parties that form part of this government. And that's the difference that we need to make. So we say thank you for coming. Our doors are always open. Amika, uh, it is a job that we have been given by the president to execute. We do so faithfully and conscientiously. To our media friends, we say thank you for always coming. We look forward to see you on Thursday so we can continue to do our work. Thank you very much.